and uh, we have a privileged visitor for with us today to speak on, uh, with us on a very good current theme and uh, issue that is ongoing in our country. And with this, we hope that uh, we could get some enlightenment on what really is happening in our country and where we are going to. And with that, uh, again, I wish to thank you and uh, Marami Kong Salamat. Yes, yes. Susan, you know, a lot of uh, people have worked in the city. So the, the topic that we have today is really something that's very important, near and dear. Uh, you know, I worked for the city as commissioner for eight years too, and I know how it is to be subjected to the sunshine ordinance of the city. So, uh, you know, so this is a topic that's near and dear to many people that I see uh, here in the audience. The talk would not be possible without a phone call that I got last, just last week ago, from uh, you know a member of the community, uh, you know, one who's a very strong ag advocate, got uh, got excited. So I'd like to recognize and uh, recognize her today, and that's uh, Susan Rufino Paul. person who's also looped into that email is uh, Polly Cortez, so she is also one of the uh, co-organizers uh, here. Grassroots. Grassroots. <laughs> this is a grassroots uh, a community-based community uh, effort. Now the speaker we're going to have today is uh, somebody who is uh, uh, you know, a veteran uh, civil servant in the Philippines. Uh, just like some of you that are here, you know, you know how it is in the civil service. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, you know, she worked for the civil service. Uh, she graduated from, uh, is it the Divine Word? Oh, Sacred, Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart with her bachelor's in accounting and a uh, master's degree in public administration from the University of the Philippines. Uh, I think it was uh, then the College of Public Administration, now the National uh, College of uh, Governance and Administration. She also has uh, a degree from the... Uh, National Defense College, which is a master's in national administration. She worked for many years and rose through the ranks of the, you know, the Commission on Audit, uh, from an analyst, uh, you know, up to the rank of a state auditor. She worked and, uh, you know, did a lot of investigations, uh, local government officials, and at the same time did a lot of consulting assignments. Uh, you know, she did the, she was uh, a consultant for. Uh, the Australian International Development Aid as a governance and anti-corruption consultant. Uh, she worked on you know, a number of international uh, projects. Uh, the, af she left, of course, the service of the Commission on Audit and uh, started working already as a program, uh, program, uh, program analyst, actually, at the Asian Development Bank uh, in the Philippines. And uh, during, during, at this stage, she decided that, uh, you know, she, during one of her investigations, she had, uh, you know, discovered a lot of irregularities, you know, in some of, uh, in some of the uh, uh, USAID, uh, you know, UNDP, some international, uh, you know, uh, loans that were supposed to go, of course, for anti-poverty and, uh, you know, for uh, military improvement programs. Uh, uh, in the Philippines, uh, it takes a lot of guts uh, to do to do and become a whistleblower and to do an expose, especially in the Philippines. Uh, your family alone will be the first people that will go against you uh, and say, "Well, are you thinking about us?" Right? Uh, if you're going to go against these, are big and powerful uh, institutions and individuals uh, in the Philippines. So it takes a lot of guts, and she continues to have uh, to be gutsy. So we admire her for that guts because she has accepted, of course, uh, at the, now as a position of the commissioner, commissioner, one of the commissioners for a seven-year term with a commission on audit in the Philippines. So we're very lucky to have her here uh, with us today to share with us her story, uh, her story of uh, anti-corruption, her story of uh, accountability, integrity, uh, ethics, uh, and all of those that go with, uh, you know, good governance. So, let's hear from Heidi Mendoza. People who do not know me but organized this event quickly, of course, Susan and Polly and Dito, and of course the representative from our council, of course, and then of course the officer of this uh, um, University of uh, San Francisco, okay. And also, let me extend my thanks to someone who is not a Filipino, but who has been more than a Filipino in terms of extending their 
entire family support to my own family, my friend Derek Chu and his son, his daughter rather, Nicole, of course. And um, I also would like to extend my thanks to the IRS, of course, and its head, uh, uh, Clarissa Bonoseda, who is also here with us. But I would say that, you know, uh, the title of the talk is Corruption in Asia, and I would have to admit, yeah, I have to up apologize that I do not want to talk about corruption in Asia. I don't want to sound too academic, because I'm not an expert on that matter. <laughs> I would rather ex talk about how a country, how some people who believe that something can be done, fought it out in a country that is mired deeply in poverty and in corruption. And to start, perhaps, let me share with you the, the small victories that we had in my visit to Washington. I was invited to give a brown bag talk in Washington, D.C. You know, all, all, all my life, during my five years in ADV, I have been wanting to be invited to give a brown bag <laughs> in ADV Manila headquarters. It never happened, you know, because I'm a Filipino and I'm just one of the local staff. It never happened in my five years. I was just so surprised that somebody is willing to finance my trip to bring me to Washington to be able to talk among World Bank staff. And it was also very emotional because Sheila, Sheila Coronel, who happened to be the director of the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism and a professor at Columbia University was also there and she was the one who facilitated the talk. And in, in, in this talk, actually, there's a representative from the office of the U.S. Senator. I would have been the senator for purposes of um, security and confidentiality. And he was there, so immediately after, uh, yesterday I was given uh, an audience with the senator, the U.S. senator. So there were lots of promises and lots of hopes for the country. I hope I will not fail them. <laughs> and also I think the most encouraging experience is really being, the, being given the chance to be heard among the auditors of the um, General Accountability Office. And I am really feel so honored because, you know, we were given the chance to talk among a full, uh, a full, uh, I mean, it's a full house. It's like a room full of auditors, including uh, an audience with the auditor, with the Comptroller General himself. And I think I was very emotional at the start. When I started my talk, I said something like, thank you for giving us the opportunity to prove that not all Filipinos are corrupt. So perhaps this afternoon, let me give you the chance and the opportunity to share with you how we work, how we struggle against all ads. So this is not really my story. This is not really the story of the Mendoza family. It is the story of the Filipino people and how we try to struggle against all ads. 